Okay, we're back. What I've set up here is the transmitter at that end. This aluminum sheet is going to represent the ground. So this is like an antenna being up on a hill and this being a ground plane. Part of the radiation coming out of that antenna down there is going to bounce off the ground and come down to the horn. And some of it's going to ride right along through the air directly to the horn. So again, we're setting up something where we're getting interference, okay? And we're going to have a standing wave of sorts here. Okay? Some of you who are old enough may remember going up on a roof with a TV antenna and having to lift it up or down to adjust so you get the signal. Most people said, lift it up, and that works. I get an increased signal. But many times you can just drop it and get an increased signal as well, okay? So, but you notice this is, and let's see if it's linearly polarized. Yeah, it's dead in this direction, okay? So we're not getting anything. Now, let's say we want to try and get rid of that constant interference. What we can do is try and make this circularly polarized. So I've made some devices to hook to these. They're not well matched, okay? There's some impedance mismatch. There are things I wound, so they're not perfect. But it'll give you a rough idea of how you could possibly smooth that really rough signal out so you don't have to move your antenna as much. So let's cut. I've added two helical spirals on here into the horns. At that end, you'll notice it's pointed down, okay? So it reflects still, okay? So some of it will be reflected, some will be projected straight out. We'll get an interference pattern again. Now, because I use cardstock paper on this, there will be linear polarization. So if I do it like this, I still have these huge. Right? So I'm going to turn it horizontally to get rid of the linear polarization that's coming through the paper. And hopefully we're just going to get the signal coming from the coils. So it's nearly constant. It's not quite perfect. And you have to realize, first of all, there's a huge impedance mismatch here, so they're not lined up very well. I made these coils, so they're not very well made, and they're being held in with wood and paper and things like that. Not a great way to couple these two together. And I'll show you really quickly how I did it. It's just basically a straw with this wrapped around it and a piece of wood to hold it in place. So, not a great impedance, mismatch, uh, impedance match, so we're getting some interference, but if, if it were a perfect spiral, it would be almost the same all the way up and down. All right, we're gonna cut again so that I can take things back apart. I have one last reflection demonstration I'd like to show you, and that is a parabolic dish antenna, near and dear to the heart of radio astronomers. Most of the radiation that hits this is focused out here to a point about here. Okay, so just to give you an idea, we're picking up some radiation out here, but if I take and stick this, you hear it, got peaked. Tremendous gain. That's why it's so popular. You get a lot of gathering power with a parabolic dish antenna. All right, let's cut. We'll meet you over here and show you some other antennas. Just a quick review. We've got a horn antenna about here, and that's the signal we're getting. Now I want to show you a few other types of antennas. The first one is a helix. Now, unfortunately, this was made by me again, so the signal strength that it's supposed to get is at least as good as that, and unfortunately it's not. But you can hear that it is gathering some signal, and it is circularly polarized so I can turn it, and I'm not losing the signal, okay? So that's one type of antenna. 
The second type, called a log periodic. So it's got little rods sticking out, okay? And we're going to take a look at that. You notice, once again, it's linearly polarized. It gathers quite a bit of signal for a tiny little antenna like this. Okay, and the last one I want to show in this location is this one. And this is kind of interesting looking. It's curved, and the signal is gathered right down here. It's called a Vivaldi after the composer. So a lot of gain, probably more than that little horn from this little tiny sheet of PC board. Okay, we're going to move to location at that midpoint and show you some other antennas and take a look at those. Yeah, I wanted to show you these little antennas up close. These are antennas that are used at longer wavelengths, but I figured we'd try them at microwave. This is a little dipole. You can see there's two little antenna pieces coming out. And there are these two rods that go with it. This one, you'll notice, is a little bit shorter, and this one is a little bit longer. This one is called a director and goes in front, and this one is called a reflector and goes behind. And you'll notice when I do this later that the director and the reflector team up to give us more gain. And that's why a lot of antennas you see on roofs have many, many elements on them, but only one is the dipole element that's actually receiving the signal. The rest are directors or reflectors. This is a little circle loop antenna. This is the square loop antenna. This is the one called a J antenna, and you can see it looks like the letter J. And this one is the four wire ground rod antenna where the this is the antenna that's actually picking up the signal and these are acting like ground rods and this is a very good antenna for signal strength. The first one I'm going to show you is this one and this is a dipole and you can see there's two little copper leads and this makes what's called a dipole antenna. <laughs> So pretty good antenna. If I use this little wood block, I can show you a couple things that happen with dipoles. Now, I, you notice I have these two sticks with other dipoles in them. This one is a little bit shorter, and that's called a director. It goes in front of the dipole. And this one's a little bit longer, and it's called a reflector. So it goes behind the dipole. So if I put my dipole antenna in here, And then I put my direct. I put my director in, and I put my reflector in. So we're getting an increased signal by using a director and a reflector. Okay, there are a few other. antennas I want to show you. First one is a loop. There's a little itty bitty loop here. A lot of us in radio astronomy, if we do if you do solar radio astronomy, you use loop antennas because they have to be very, quite large. Pretty good signal strength. So that's a round loop. They also make rectangular or square loops. So I'm going to show you this one. Okay. 
There's an interesting antenna called a J, and it looks like a J. There's a long part and a short part. And so, let's put this in the beam. And the last one, this funny one that looks like a spacecraft, and it's got single rods sticking up there, and then these ground plane rods that are bent. So it's called the bent ground plane antenna. And it's got four each corner. So, this one has the best performance of these little ones. <laughs>